I just got home from work and I'm running myself a bath. I've been having one every single day at the moment, like trying to get into like relaxation and get myself ready for the birth so that when little baby decides to come, I'll be all like calm and zen. <laughs> Probably in reality be an absolute shit show and everything will go out the window, but we're giving it a go. And Brendan's gonna order dinner whilst I have my bath. So he's actually hung over today. I'd got salmon and potatoes and veg to have for dinner, but he's like, that's not gonna cut it. So we're gonna get a kebab instead. <laughs> it's so nice to be able to be flexible with him and not be like, oh my God, that's not what I planned to have. Is it gonna be more calories? Like maybe it is, fuck it. It's gonna be fine. Food is just food. Little dogs come to say hello. Bertie. You gonna come up? Gonna come up? Oh, there's our baby's bed in the corner, which has actually just turned into a clothes rack. <laughs> Whilst we don't have a baby to put in it. So this video is about relationships. Um, I kind of took questions on Instagram and got over a hundred questions about relationships. So I've actually split it into three videos. This one's the second. So I posted another one last week and I'll post one next week as well. And I'll talk about Brendan quite a lot in the videos, who's my husband. We've been married for about a year and a half. Just a bit of my kind of personal experience of relationships whilst having an eating disorder. Let's go and get in this bath. Are you chewing my towel? <laughs> Are you chewing my towels? I'm having a bagel for breakfast. I've got a really sore throat this morning. It's like really hurts when I swallow, so. I don't know how this is gonna be. We're actually going to our first hypnobirthing class this morning. Um, so Brendan's still in bed. I've actually got no idea if he's gonna have breakfast or not. He doesn't always, and he'd probably rather have a lion than have breakfast, so doesn't matter. Different bodies, different paths. My body's not gonna gain weight because he's missing breakfast. don't you? Oh good boy, stop biting me. So someone else asked if I found it triggering when my partner like skips meals or leaves stuff or goes to the gym. Betty, no. Bren actually skips breakfast all the time, he's just not really a breakfast person and I am a massive breakfast person, I love it. And that's fine, like we've got different bodies, different tastes, different preferences. No, like I don't need to miss breakfast because he misses breakfast, or I don't need to wait for him to get up this morning to find out if he's gonna have it, or I don't have to wait until I get to this class to find out if everyone else had their breakfast. Like, I, Bertie. I have a different body to these people, I have different needs, I have different history. Like I'm not in a place where I can be skipping meals because if I do that today, then tomorrow I'll be like, oh, well, yesterday you skipped a meal, so now today you have to do that. And other people don't have that in their brains. So like, I have a different brain to these people. And Bren's also started like working out at the moment. He's doing this insanity, something or other. It's like an at-home workout thing. And so I'm at home all the time, like lying on the sofa and he'll just go off and do an insanity. Doesn't mean I need to do one for a number of different reasons. Like it's not really compatible with my recovery. I don't want to get obsessed with exercise. I'm 32 weeks pregnant in a few days. Like I don't want to be throwing myself around anyway. Pregnancy aside, like if you're in recovery from restrictive eating, from over exercise, like it doesn't matter if people around you are skipping meals or they're working out, like that shit is not for you at the moment. And it doesn't mean it's not forever as well. Like. One day I might be able to skip breakfast, which I don't think I will ever do because I love breakfast so much, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like right now, these are my needs and it doesn't matter what people around me are doing. Like that shit is not for me. Say hello.
I got so many questions about like the impact of anorexia on our relationship. So starting with negative impact. Oh my God. I feel like anorexia is like a constant presence, almost like a third part of the relationship. And for me, it like dictated everything when we could eat what we could eat where we could eat how the food was prepared who prepared it and like things that were supposed to be fun were the worst for this so like going on holiday because it was so much out of my routine it would end up being so stressful like trying to find a restaurant we'd end up going from like restaurant to restaurant to restaurant with me like desperately looking for somewhere something i could eat i'd have to eat at certain times and i'd have to know everything we were doing I'd have to have the whole day planned around food and like just so so rigid and poor brendan like that's so shit for him i also found that sometimes it could be like the only topic of conversation because it was on my mind so much like I didn't have space to think about anything else all my body and brain was telling me was go and eat go and eat go and eat if I was with Bren and we just finished breakfast I'd then be like what time are we having lunch what are we having for lunch what are we having for dinner that's going to impact what I choose to have for lunch he doesn't want to think like that like he's so much more spontaneous than that like for me having an eating disorder it's not just been me who suffers from it it's like the whole family partner all relationships are all impacted by it hello darling Hello, pop it. I mean, I'm so lucky. Brendan is so incredibly understanding. And I think he really gets like, it's not a quick fix for an eating disorder. It's not like challenge something once and that's you done or get to a healthy weight and that's you recovered. I think he does understand like how repetitive recovery needs to be in order to like rewire your brain and move past the eating disorder. But still like, it must be so frustrating. It's such a constant presence. No. No biting. I think you've got to be careful as well not to end up in that situation where like your partner almost becomes like your therapist. No, because it can be like at the beginning of a relationship, it's really scary to open up and tell them what's going on and actually show them that bit that you might be like hiding from the world. But then once you do, it can like go to the other end of the extreme where you're like really, really reliant on them and you have to tell them everything and like you can only eat if they're there which i guess is also not healthy in a relationship and my psychologist did talk to me about like make sure you've got boundaries like that's why i go and see her so like she can help me with that side of things come here come here puppet hello a few people asked if i was ever scared that brendan would leave me and for me it was more like at times I got scared thinking I should leave him. Like when I'd see friends' relationships and I'd kind of be like jealous of how like spontaneous they could be, how flexible, how they would just enjoy things like going for dinner and drinks together. And I was just like, I can't do any of that. And then because I can't do it, it means Brendan can't do it. I kind of just felt he deserved so much better than like control and rigidity that came with me but then also he'd remind me like that's not you really like that's your eating disorder and i wasn't planning to stay in my eating disorder like i was actively challenging it all the time i was in really active recovery that's why i was gaining weight that's why i was challenging my fear foods that's why i was breaking comfort zones and feeling really horrible and uncomfortable so much of the time i'm just gonna play fetch with the little dog for a sec ready fetch good boy Go. <laughs> Ready? Fetch. And then a really nice question is how has your relationship improved with recovery? Oh my God, it's improved so much. I feel like so much more connected to Bren now. I'm in the world with him and I'm properly with him. I'm not like living a double life of like trying to eat with him and join in and be spontaneous, but like starving myself during the week to be able to do it. We can be spontaneous and just like grab dinner if we're out and we fancy it. Or I can just let Bren cook. Like I don't have a calorie amount that I'm trying to stick to every day. I don't have a weight that I need to be tomorrow. I, like, my life's not controlled by food and weight. And I feel like it's just freed up so much mental space. Like if I'm talking to Bren or anyone, like friends, anything, I can properly listen to what they're saying. And I don't have half my head on like, like what did you have for lunch? What are you gonna have for dinner? How long is that until dinner? Should you eat something now? And now like we're having a baby together. I'm seven and a half months pregnant little sprouts in there and I feel like they're my priority you know like Bren the baby our family I just want them to have me like all of me and like a fun relaxed version of me not an uptight controlled have I got all my stuff in line 
And then someone else asked, how can we let them know we're grateful for them, even though anorexia makes us behave like assholes sometimes? <laughs> Commit to recovery. Get your body to a healthy weight. Challenge the foods you're scared of. Challenge the rules you've got. Maybe it's like letting your partner or family cook for you or going out to restaurants and ordering straight from the menu. Eating at different times, eating more than your normal calorie limit. Basically letting go of the eating disorder. It's not comfortable, but challenging it again and again and again. Like there's not room for an eating disorder in your relationships. So if you're relating more to like the negative impacts of an eating disorder on your relationship, like it's not your fault, you're starved, you're restricted, you've got a history of an eating disorder. I think if Brem was starved, like it would have been the same thing. He would have been distracted by food all the time and food obsessed because his whole brain and body and being would have been just telling him, go and eat, this is survival, go and eat. Nobody's a superhero. You can't live in a starved and restricted body and have meaningful relationships where you're totally present and like free from food for. It doesn't work. Like, yeah, I really don't think you can do both. The ink disorder's gotta go. Stevie's come to say hello. Stevie. Hello, darling. Oh, good girl. Hello, Poppet. Ah, what's that for? Cats are little bastards. 